We get our electricity from a socket. But this electricity is just a raw material for us. Like concrete for an architect. Sheet metal for an auto body maker. Glass for a glass blower. Or wood for a furniture designer. The raw material electricity undergoes a special transformation with printing or generators. A defined form of frequency and power always adapted to the customer's process. Join us to learn more about the widest range of applications for power conversion technology, such as laser technology. Here at Trump, CO2 lasers, which are used to cut and weld workpieces, use a generator operating at exactly 13.56 megahertz as their energy source. But the current has to be adapted to the process. And this is how it's done. Basically, a generator consists of an oscillator, a modulator, various amplifiers, and a control unit. Like a tuning fork, the cord's oscillator acts as the first link in the chain generating uniform oscillations, in our case, a constant 13.56 megahertz. However, the signal, or the amplitude, is still much too weak. So, in the next step, the signal travels through several amplifiers, gaining intensity. At the output of the generator, the control unit continuously measures the power and compares it with the required power, in our example, 50 kilowatts. Based on the result, the control unit constantly regulates the modulator, which is connected in front of the amplifiers. The modulator has the same function as the volume control on a stereo system. The control unit determines how much power is made available at the end of the amplifier chain. Inside a generator, a millionth of a watt becomes 50,000 watts with a constant frequency of 13.56 megahertz. For the laser application, the generator must also pulse this flow of current, splitting the output of up to 50 kilowatts into individual packets and sending them off at intervals from one per second up to 100,000 per second. This pulsing ability is enormously important for laser cutting operations. The generator, in combination with the machine control and the laser controller, form a system that enables this pulsing. But generators can also be used to treat metals. This technique, known as induction heating, is used for the hardening or melting of metals. The generator interacts with the workpiece using magnetic fields, highly focused and without any contact, to heat the material up to 1000 degrees centigrade within just seconds. Afterwards, the heated metals can be forged, for example. Induction heating works through electromagnetic fields of specific frequencies. Here, two key components are needed. First, the generator. It produces the high power required to generate these electric fields reliably and stably over many years. Second, the inductor. It transfers the generated power into the workpiece. There, these electromagnetic fields create electric currents in the material. 
In combination with its electrical resistance, these currents heat up the material, just like the filament of a light bulb. The better the inductor is adapted to both the workpiece's geometry and the generator, the more efficient it transfers the energy into the workpiece. By adjusting the frequency, the user can determine how deep the energy penetrates into the workpiece. Low frequency energy penetrates deep into the workpiece and thus heats it way inside. High frequencies only heat the surface of the workpiece. If the hot surface is quickly cooled, it will become harder than before it was treated. But the core of the workpiece remains elastic and thus break resistant. Intelligent control technology and optimized components assure precise and reproducible results. Just as fascinating is the use of generators and surface coating processes. For example, in manufacturing flat panel displays, or like here, when creating semiconductor wafers. Plasma enhanced deposition enables a film thickness that is 100,000 times thinner than a typical layer of paint. But here too, it is not a matter of sheer power but rather of precisely controlled and applied power. Plasma is a charged gas in a vacuum that has been ionized by very high voltage. The gas becomes conductive. During the coating process, the energetic ions of the plasma knock atoms from a target material, which is then deposited onto the surface of the object to be coated. plasma is excited and sustained by enormous amounts of energy, up to 300 kilowatts provided by the generators. Due to the high voltage levels needed to generate plasma conditions, lightning-like electrical flashovers, or arcs, frequently occur in the plasma. These arcs may cause defects on the surface of the ultimate end product, such as a semiconductor wafer. Leading edge generators anticipate the problem and instantly shut down the power before the arc can cause any damage. Then, in the twinkling of an eye, the generator immediately returns to an output power of up to 300 kilowatts. Hurtinger generators need less than a microsecond for this arc management. It's in this very microsecond when the wafer's fate is sealed. Scrap or the heart of your new laptop. Intelligent control technology makes it all happen. At Hurtinger, our raw material, the electricity from the socket, is continuously being reinvented. We constantly find new ways to transform it. This is how we ensure that the broadest range of customer processes can run seamlessly, safely, and stably. Generators are the heart of many high technology systems. When coating flat panel displays, when coating DVDs, and fabrics, solar cells, eyeglass lenses, when hardening automotive parts, or cutlery, when growing artificial crystals, producing optical fibers for a broad range of CO2 laser applications and coating architectural glass. Reliable generators are the backbone of mission critical processes. We're well aware of this responsibility. That's why we work every day to ensure that our power can be relied upon at all times. Hertinger Electronic, generating confidence.
Bye.